In this screencast, we're going to take a look at record filtering in the XAM data grid. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a XAM data grid to our application here. So I'll go into my toolbox, grab the XAM data grid out, drag it in. Let's go ahead and site, set the height and the width to auto so that it fills our application window here. We'll also remove our margin. All right, let's go ahead and add some data. We'll go into our server explorer. And I'll just go into a Northwind database and pull out one of the tables here. Um, before I do that, let's go ahead and add a link to SQL data class to our application. So we'll go ahead and click Add, New Item, Link to SQL data class. Go ahead and add that in. Now we'll go back to our Server Explorer. And I'm going to drag out one of these tables. We'll use the Orders table and drop that onto the designer here for the link to SQL classes. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. It'll generate my classes for me. What I'm going to do now is just data bind the XAM data grid. So we'll go to the code view here, view code. What we're going to do now is just a couple of lines of code. First, we're going to create our data class's data context. And the next thing we're going to do is just assign the data source property of our XAM data grid to the orders collection in our data context. All right, now that we've got that set up, we can do a quick build on this and just make sure that our grid is showing up with data inside of it. And there it is, we have our grid showing up with our data. So let's go ahead and add some filtering. You notice we have quite a few records inside of here, so if you were building an application, there's a good chance that the end user would want some way to go ahead and filter through these records. So let's go back into our code here. We'll go back to our XAML, and let's go ahead and add some filtering into this. So the first thing we'll want to do is enable filtering inside of the grid itself. And we're going to do that through the field settings. So we'll click on the grid here and we'll go into our field settings. And you'll see we have our allow record filtering. We're just going to go ahead and set that to true. And immediately if I were to build this again, we'll see that we now have a filter UI showing up inside of the grid. And we can go ahead and filter through our records. So you can see we have this filter UI showing up. This is the default UI that we're looking at here. It has a combo that we can use, so we can type. Now we're seeing all of our values that begin with 10248. So we can go ahead and clear that filter out. And let's go ahead and change our comparator here. So we can go to um, less than a certain value, or we can use some of these that are built in. For instance, the top percentile, or we can use the top n number. So if we wanted to have the top 10 for instance we can go ahead and do that you can see here we have bottom 10 listed so we can go and see the bottom 10 results um, we can go to the bottom 10 percentile and list that as well so a lot of these are built in the user also has the ability to create their own custom so if we go in here and click on custom uh, we can go ahead and add a custom filter condition inside here so as the user they can go ahead and click on add condition for instance and choose what they want it to be. So maybe they wanted it less than and a certain value here. And you notice we get those same drop downs. So let's go ahead and choose one of these values. We'll click on OK here. And now we have this custom filter being used inside of this uh, grid. So let's go ahead and close this out and see what we can do from the properties perspective to change what the user can do here. So I'll close that down. And we'll go ahead and take a look at some other properties. We're going to go into our field layout settings. So let's go ahead and collapse this property down. We'll go into field layout settings here. And we'll take a look at some of the filtering options we have here. So you'll notice we have the first one starting out with filter action. You can choose how records are filtered. They could either be hidden, which is the default, or they could be disabled. So you can show those same records inside of the grid, but disabled. Um, that way, the user still sees the same data. The size of the grid isn't changing, but they can certainly see uh, more emphasis on the items that they're looking at. You can de-emphasize the ones that are disabled. You also have control over where the filter clear button is. So you notice before I was able to go ahead and click on that clear button to remove my filter. You could say either you don't want one, or it's going to be on the uh, record selector, 
or the filter cell or both. You can also change the filter record location. Now this is a good example of um, changing around the UI of the grid. So we can go ahead and change this to on bottom fixed for instance. And we'll go ahead and build this again. And you'll notice that instead of my filter row showing up at the top, it's going to be at the bottom of the grid. And as I scroll through the data in the grid, it will remain fixed in position. So you'll see as I scroll through my records, my filter row always remains at the bottom of the grid. Or I could say that remained at the top of the grid. We can also change the filter UI type. Uh, right now it's set to filter record but we could also do a label icons. Now the difference here, and I'll show you because it's easiest to show, is how the UI is presented. It's either a row in the grid itself, or in this case it's actually going to be a header icon that appears inside of each one of these field headers. So if you see now we have this filter icon, I can click on that and now I get a drop down of all of my filter values. Now there is one um, advantage to using one over the other. This presents a simpler UI for the user so they can simply just go to this drop down list and choose a value. But if you wanted to give the user even more capabilities, um, the filter row might provide more capabilities so that they can go and choose their comparator. They could still do that by creating their own custom, but it's an extra click, an extra step away for them. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is add a filter dynamically at runtime. A lot of times you want to do this in code to provide the user with some sort of filtering of the data when the application is first loaded. This is especially critical if you have a lot of data. You don't necessarily want the user to have to scroll through thousands of records when you know that there's a filter that makes sense to load initially. So the first thing we want to do is go into our field layouts and add a field layout. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And you'll notice that inside of here we have this record filters collection. Now we can go ahead and add a record filter into here, but we can't add conditions in through uh, the XAML declaratively. So that's something we can go ahead and take care of through code. So we'll go ahead and OK that and dismiss the dialog. We want to go into the events here and do this in the loaded event of the XAM data grid. Now the reason you want to do it inside of the loaded event is because we need the records uh, and the fields to be present before we can go ahead and add our condition. So if the field isn't present yet and the data grid doesn't have those fields, we're not going to be able to add that record. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is grab a reference to our field layout. So we're going to go ahead and declare our variable here. And we can use the default field layout off of the XAM data grid. Since we only have one field layout inside of our collection, it'll go ahead and use that as the default. If you wanted to specify a specific collection or a specific field layout, you can use field layouts and use the indexer to choose a specific field layout. So next thing we're going to do is access our uh, filter records collection. So let's go ahead and say record filters and let's grab that off of the layout there we go now we have our filters collection now let's go ahead and create a new record filter so let's go ahead and do record filter filter and let's go ahead and point to the field that we want to filter on and in this case we're going to use order ID so we'll go ahead and do layout.fields We'll use the overload here where we can specify a field. Layout.fields and then pass in the key of that field. Order ID. Now let's add a filter condition. And we'll add a new comparison condition. And we'll use the overload again and specify our comparison operator. Let's go ahead and do an ends with, and then we'll put a value in here, and let's just use zero. So now when this is executed, we're going to end up filtering on the order ID field, and we're going to only show the records that end in zero. So the last thing we'll need to do is add the filter to our collection. So we'll do filters.add, and now we can go ahead and build this and take a look at our grid. So now you can see we have our filter data. All of the items that are showing up have an order ID that end with zero, 
I can go ahead and change that filter by dropping this down and changing this to all custom or choose a different filter. If we were using our fixed row, I could also clear this filter um, completely as the user. So that's a quick look at how to use filtering inside of the Xam data grid. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.